Hi, my name's Ian Harper and I'm the author of the Ciceroan guidebook, Walking the Cape Roth Trail. Welcome to a new series of video guides to help you plan and prepare for an expedition on what's been described as Britain's toughest trail. At the risk of sounding like a football manager, stage two of the Cape Roth Trail is a game of two halves. You start off on very easy terrain in Glenfinnan, but end with one foot in the gloriously remote rough bounds of Noidart. Glenfinnan itself is stunningly beautiful, although wounds from a recent hydroelectric development are slowly healing. The route starts at Glenfinnan's monument, passing under the railway viaduct. As you pass through the majestic arc of the viaduct, it's worth taking a moment to savour this wonderful location. The viaduct and monument guard the head of the loch, and for once human endeavour and the wild landscape seem strangely at peace. The viaduct has been made famous by its appearances in the Harry Potter films more recently, but it was built by Sir Robert McAlpine between 1897 and 1901, and it forms part of the Malague extension of the West Highland Line. The line connects Fort William and Malague, and it was a crucial artery for the local fishing industry and the Highland economy. It's considered to be one of the most picturesque train journeys in the entire world. A lot of the Cape Roth Trail falls into relatively well-defined days, but the section between Glenfinnan and Shieldbridge offers you perhaps the most flexibility so you can shape your days depending on your fitness and schedule. There are convenient bothies at Akeel, Sorleys and Barrisdale, limited accommodation at Barrisdale and Kinlochhorn, and good camping spots dotted along the way. The terrain is often pretty tough going underfoot, so I've given each section a rough rating out of 10. But what I would advise this early in your expedition is to err on the side of shorter days, because what can seem like low daily mileages on paper can actually turn out to be pretty difficult days when the roughness of the terrain is added into the mix. And remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Progress up Glenfinnan starts on a road and good 4x4 tracks and you'll pass the estate bothy at Corryhully, assuming you didn't stay overnight there. Enjoy these excellent tracks while they last because the rest of the terrain to Shieldbridge is pretty unforgiving underfoot. From the small bridge after the bothy, a clear track climbs steadily up to the pass between Streep and Skirthulim. There's a spot height on the OS map here of 471 metres, and the path zigzags across the burn at various points on your way up. Crossing through the Bilach, you'll pass through an old line of iron fence posts, which brings you to a steep descent into Glen Kurnan. The first kilometre of descent is distinctly tricky, particularly in wet or icy conditions, and care should be taken with a heavy rucksack. Once you reach the base of the slope, follow the clear path to the west of the river, which is to say the left-hand side. Although Ordnance Survey maps show the path continuing to the west of the river, it disappears in places due to heavy bank erosion, which makes it hard and tiring to follow. So on balance, whilst it's better to keep to the west side of the river at first, it's then a good idea to cross over to the east or right-hand side just before the river heads into a steep-sided ravine. You can then follow the east bank all the way to a bridge over the larger River Peen. Crossing over this sturdy bridge, you climb briefly to the fence line and then walk about 100 metres to the west to pick up a boggy path that leads north through the woods. 
Forestry activity in the area generally makes this path quite boggy and unpleasant in places, but on balance it's the least bad option as you'll be climbing up to meet a good 4x4 track, so it's worth persevering. Follow the 4x4 track east for about a kilometre before turning left at a fork and taking the track onwards into Glendessery towards Akil Bothy. It's an excellent track which will come as something of a relief. The Bothy at Akil makes an ideal overnight stop. As you progress along the 4x4 track, just look out for a path leading off to the right that descends through woods to the Bothy. If you want to push on slightly further, there are also some good camping spots further up the glen alongside the River Dessery beside some of its wide bends. If you're feeling fit and strong, you could push on towards Sorley's, but that makes it a long hard day so early in the journey. And once you're past the forestry in Glen Dessery, the ground is too rough and boggy for camping, so that's something to bear in mind. In terms of route alternatives for this section, you could head north from Drum Sally at the head of Loch Isle up Glian Fion Lihi, climbing to the Bilach before descending to join the main route at the bridge in Glen Peen. But this alternative is only really worth considering if you choose to head north from Kamusnagal via the Loch Isle side alternative to the first stage, skipping out Glen Finnan. Otherwise, it's not really relevant. So, thanks a lot for watching. And please subscribe to the channel and leave a like and also let us know in the comments if there's anything you'd like us to cover in future episodes. If you head over to caperothtrail.org you'll find all the information that you need to start planning an expedition there for free as well as a new shop so if you fancy a t-shirt or a mug like this you can get one there and it all helps towards the upkeep of the website. So thanks again for watching and I'll catch you soon.